Thanks for coming by the Amazing Libertines channel. I'm Best Age Comics, and I want to tell you about the best ages of comics, uh, comics through the decades. And my background in comics is I'm a 50 year plus year reader of comics, and I'll be sharing uh, some of the stories that I've seen over the last five decades. And I'm sharing these stories because they gave me so much enjoyment and you know, uh, some of these are available in trade paperbacks or in, you know, collection, collected editions, but others you might be able to find. Like I found this story, it's DC Star Spangled War Stories, number 162. And I found it because I read it, you know, back around 1975 and it made such a stark impression on me. It was, the stories were excellent, you know, from that time. Um, this book was, I read this in 75. This story was written in um, April, May of 72. It was somebody else's collection. So I was over at a friend's house. And this story didn't even have credits in it. Like today you'll see they put the uh, the writers and artists names easy to be found. This one didn't, but I could tell who did it by looking at it. Uh, I knew that Joe Kubert did the first story, and uh, Russ Heath did the second. And Russ Heath is one of my all-time favorite artists ever. He's an incredible draftsman. He took a lot of time and a lot of effort to make um, his machines like World War One planes and uh, trucks and weapons and tanks uh, as accurate as possible. And his figures weren't bad either. He was just terrific. This was my first introduction to the uh, Balloon Buster, Steve Savage of Balloon Buster. This is where I first read about him in um, 1975. And this story again, was just terrific. I was, it, it just blew me away, even at that young age. I was just so impressed at how the artwork was so precise that I could imagine that these scenes were real, that they could have actually happened. And the storytelling in this, the uh, backup story, uh, written, and I looked it up, and it was written by Robert Kaniger, a important writer of the DC War comics and, and other stories too. And uh, he just wrote so many and, and the stories were terrific. And I was going through this story again and it is just amazing from panel to panel, the uh, storytelling talent that Kaniger and Russ Heath had together where you just went through panel after panel of this duel, this airplane duel, and it was just absolutely amazing. Uh, the first story was equally, made an equal impression on me. That's why I looked for this book for a long time. I had no idea what the number was. I had no idea, you know, who did it. I just knew it had the unknown soldier. Uh, who is a um, an unknown soldier. He, <laughs> he uses disguises, and his face is always wrapped in bandages. But I knew the cover. Uh, this image, this Joe Kubert cover, was emblazoned in my head. And this story, written by Joe Kubert also, written and drawn, was a powerful story to me as a 10-year-old because it the themes of the story were themes that resonated with a 10-year-old. Um, as a 10-year-old, I faced bullies, you know, and sometimes had to fight. And you were all, always afraid of being a coward. And that was the same thing that happened in this story. It's about a new recruit. He's trained. And uh, he's wondering if he's going to be a coward. And the Unknown Soldier's connection to it is that they were sending him into the field with these new recruits to find out how effective the training was. So that's why he's there to be a witness to this young soldier's story. 
But it also had this panel in it. You know, this soldier, everybody's watched him freeze up and everything. They sent him to check out an alleyway. And there is a Wehrmacht soldier <laughs> lying in wait. And it was this scene in there that was just incredible. And in the storytelling in this panel, you know, um, the bar man, man with the big machine gun, he's at one end of the alleyway. He tries to give the soldier cover, but the uh, German soldier doesn't step out. He just wraps, you know, his submachine gun around the corner without looking and just sprays the whole area and he takes out the barman. So <laughs> I remember this scene too. And again, this is just great storytelling with the way that these panels are laid out where the unknown soldier, he comes back to find, you know, his guys in trouble. And he, the um, German soldier tries that stunt again, except that this time he, you know, uh, the unknown soldier uh, does it too to better effect. Yeah, so finally, all right, the Unknown Soldier doesn't give up on the guy. He, he sticks by him and, and um, gives him an opportunity. And by the end of the story, yeah, he he's put into a situation where, you know, and he um, rises to the occasion and, 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 and performs. And uh, that's what the story was about. And so it was a story that etched itself on my elementary school brain, and uh, I went looking for it after the fact. Great story, great storytellers. This is what uh, today's creators have to come up to the, the level of. They've got to try. So here we had Joe Kubert, uh, Robert Kaniger, and, and Russ Heath, great storytellers. Um, 52 big pages, only 25 cents. The other thing that these issues had, which was really cool, was they had their numbers inside here. And uh, I looked at another uh, Balloon Buster, um, st uh, Steve Savage story, um, written in 1966. And the numbers put, like, the print numbers were up in the 400,000s as far as how many copies of that comic that they printed. Um, this one, when I found, I found that, uh, page and, uh, where, come on now, where are you? Where are you? There we go. And it gives the circulation numbers right here in the book. And, uh, here the, um, circulation looks like the copies are down into the, um, 150 to 288,000 numbers of copies that are printed. So the numbers have come down from uh, 1966 to uh, 1972. So, and I think that's eventually uh, the war comics. They're, you know, DC had five war titles. Um, you know, they um, the war comics gradually, you know, became less and less popular or they so fewer and fewer issues, and they gradually disappeared over time. But there were some incredible stories. And um, if you can get a one of the DC War comics from this era, era chances are you're going to read a very entertaining story. So thanks again, you know, for coming by the channel. And um, I appreciate it. And please hit the like button. If you like this video and become a subscriber of the channel and if you didn't like the video uh, I'll try harder <laughs>